All right, back on the Hornet today. Finally gonna pull the engine out. Uh, we're just just a few minutes from being ready to actually pull it out. And right, I'll get you guys in here to see, show you exactly what we need to do. These AMCs are a little bit different than like a small box Chevy. They, the bolts for the motor mount actually drop through holes in the frame stands. Uh, so it's not really like a, it's not like a small block Chevy where the, uh, the motor mount is actually two pieces and then there's a bolt that slides through the middle. Uh, the motor mount itself is one piece. It bolts to the side of the block and then there's two bolts that drop through the frame stand. So it might be a little bit more difficult to wiggle this thing out of there. We might not have as much room. Uh, but the bolts that hold the motor mount to the side of the block are really easy accessible So we may end up having to loosen those and I'll show you what that looks like Okay, so I don't know if you guys can see this very well But these are the two bolts right here on the back side of the motor mount or the frame stand I mean and then if you look the motor mount is actually attached to the block up there with a couple of bolts so the only way for this engine to come out with the motor mount still attached to the block is to go straight up, I think. Uh, otherwise, we may end up having to pop these bolts. I don't know how well you guys can see, but we may end up having to pop that bolt right there and the other bolt there, probably see it, holding it to the block. I think there might actually be three. The other one I think we can get from the other side of the lower control arm. So we're gonna try this option first to just pop those two bolts out. If that doesn't work, then we're gonna pop the bolts on the frame, or I mean on the engine block. So join us, won't you? Hopefully uh, pulling this out is easy. I've only ever pulled LS engines and Chevy engines and stuff, never an EMC. So watch us struggle with this, it should be fun. All right, just about ready. Popped all the bolts out of the motor mounts except for one. I think the stud that was vulcanized to the rubber side of the mount broke off. I'll show you guys what that looks like. So on the driver's side here, it's a lot easier to see. Maybe, maybe it's easier to see. Yeah, so right there, those are the two mounts on the ground side, if you will, of the frame stand. One of the bolts or one of the nuts came right off. The other one was pretty rusty. And even with some enthusiastic work with an impact, uh, I think it actually broke free uh, on the rubber side. So the stud and the nut are just spinning now. So my hope is that when we go to pull this out, because that is ripped free on the other side, that the mount will just disintegrate and pull apart uh, when we yank this thing out from the front. Transmission's all disconnected. It's supported by the jack. The linkage for the shifter's done. Uh, the speedometer cable's pulled. The only thing that might be fun is the transmission cooler lines up the front here. We just have rags stuffed around them to keep them from leaking too much. So we're gonna have to move those out of the way a little bit as we pull this thing, but I think we're just about ready. So worst case scenario, if the, hello, worst case scenario, if those bolts right there don't cooperate and come out, then we can always grab the ones out of the block, which... So unfortunately, after looking at this a little bit more, we're going to have to, kill, uh, to take the engine and trans out as one piece because the, the two center bell housing bolts on either side are physically inaccessible uh, with the car on the ground. Uh, I don't think there's a way that we can even get our hands in there to get the bolts started when we put the engine and trans back together. So. Plans are changing. We're gonna rip the drive shaft out, uh, drop the transmission cross member, and we're gonna yank this whole thing uh, as one piece.
All right, so here she is, massive 304, and what I'm assuming is a maybe a 904 Chrysler transmission. I don't know, uh, but she's out. So uh, <clears throat> we gotta split the transmission from the engine and then stab it on a hoist or a, an engine stand, I mean. Then we can swap over all the parts from the 360. Welcome back, out in the shop again. Uh, it's been a long time since I've checked in. My videos are what they are because I work full time just like everybody else. So I don't put out weekly content because I don't get paid for this. I'm gonna give you guys an update on the Hornet, right? The Green Hornet. Uh, this thing has been apart for quite a while. Uh, we had the plans of simply just swapping in this 360 over here. And of course, like with most old cars or any car project, simple is never part of the plan. So I'll get you guys in here and kind of show you, talk through a little bit of uh, what we found with this replacement engine and kind of where we're at now. All right, ready, go. Oh yeah, I like butter. Yep, rusty butter. I mean, these don't even weigh that much. <laughs> Two guys to twist over a small block EMC. It's just like that. All right, so this engine might look brand new, crispy, fresh, thanks to the killer paint job that Steve put on it. Um, but this is actually the Sludge Beast engine that uh, he picked up for 350 bucks with the Turbo 400 transmission. So the trans was sold and we started taking this guy apart. And it might look nice and clean in here now, but when we first pulled it apart, the entire valley was covered in caked oil. The heads were really badly caked up. Uh, it almost seems like whoever ran this engine in the Jeep truck that it came out of never changed the oil. I think he probably just topped it off and kind of used that as his oil change, which was just keeping fresh oil in it. So we tore this thing down and we were just gonna slam a camshaft in it. Uh, we went to do that. I was cleaning out the cam bearings just with brake clean on a paper towel and then kind of blowing them off with an air gun. Uh, and I shoved my air nozzle down through one of the viewing holes here and actually blew a chunk of the bearing out for the, one of the cam bearings back here. So that led us to tear down the whole short block. We sent the block out to be cleaned and had the cam bearings put in it. And we thought maybe we would just be able to reshell the bottom end uh, with you know with the crank as is and put it back together but when we took the crank out of it uh, every single journal both main journal and rod journal was scored up had deep grooves in it because so much trash went through the oil system on this engine so out came the crank out came the pistons and rods the crank went to be machined we cut it 10 under ordered new bearings and then we went to reassemble this thing and I think the day, the day we were going to put the pistons in it, uh, a chunk of one of the pistons broke off while we were cleaning it. So that stopped us again, uh, ordered new replacement pistons. So they're just a cast silver light piston. I think they're a nine to one piston, which is better than what came out of here. Uh, the stock pistons in a 360 are like eight and a quarter to one. So they're really, really low. So we up the compression just a little bit. It won't give us much horsepower, but it should help. So long story short, the new pistons are in, new uh, crank spin machine, new bearings in the bottom end, new piston rings, uh, the same cylinder heads with the new camshaft. So today our goal is to get this thing back together because while uh, Wisconsin refuses to give us nice weather, we know it's coming sometime. So we have gotta get this thing back together and bolt it up to the transmission and in the car. All right, here we are, oil pans on. That's the crank bolt. Don't worry about that little guy. Uh, yes, we do plan on painting this oil pan, but we really wanted to get this thing sealed up today just so that there isn't anything else that could potentially get stuck in there. 
Uh, we also want to add a little bit of oil. We're going to dump it right over the cam before we put the intake on. Uh, right now, the harmonic balancer, we just finished uh, wire wheeling the rust off of that. We're going to shoot it with some black paint and get that sucker put on there. And then we can flip this thing right side up and put the intake on. Welcome back. Today, uh, we're just about done with the uh, Hornet engine. So the, the engine's put back together. We're gonna rip it off the stand today, bolt the uh, flywheel flex plate on there, and then actually get it made it back to the transmission. The goal is to try to get this thing back in the car soon. So all the engine reassembly is ready to go. Uh, there are a couple of odd things, and I'll show you just a little bit more here in just a second. Everything, everything that we could put back on, save for a couple pieces, is on here. Uh, the balancer's in, crank pulley's on, and a couple of random accessory brackets. We're not going to do a whole lot else until it's in the car. Uh, I just think it'll make it easier for us. Like the distributor, we're not going to drop the distributor back in right now, just because with the carburetor lift plate, it gets kind of close to the engine crane uh, with the distributor in. So, I'm sorry, this is the thermostat with the distributor in, way down here. Thing sticks up like right here. And yeah, we had a little bit of a problem with uh, how far we had to lean this thing with uh, the transmission attached to it. So anyway, uh, that's what we're gonna work on now. Get this thing off of here, get the flex plate bolted on, and hopefully get that transmission out from uh, the corner and bolt it on there. Should have done that. All right, look at that, it's free. Woohoo! Okay, so we're gonna pull the, what do you guys call this thing? I call it the crab, because every engine has crabs, I guess, or it could have a crab, I don't know. That's what I call it, because that's what it looks like to me, maybe. I don't know how many legs a crab has. How many legs does a crab have? I don't know. The four, six? six? Yeah. Okay, so maybe it's not a crab. Comment what you think it is, or don't, I don't care. Okay, so if I was an AMC transmission, where would I be? Oh, there we are. Okay, so I just got to move a few things out of the way. We can drag that thing out of the corner. All right, ladies, gentlemen, and everybody else, kids, doesn't matter. All the people that are paying attention. It's the next, it's two days later. Uh, we hit a snag. We were super excited to bolt the trans back to this engine. And of course we figured out, as I mentioned in the previous clip, we had the wrong flex plate. So uh, we have the right flex plate now. And we've also discovered some very unique stuff with the way AMC balances their stuff. And I know a lot of people online will say that this is supposed to be balanced to the engine after you get your flex plate. But in our case, this is not a race car. It will not see a lot of time above 5,000 RPM. So we're going to bolt it together. 
I'll show you guys here in a second. So this is the flex plate that we need to adapt a 360 cubic inch engine that originally came from the factory with a GM Turbo 400 transmission. This is the flex plate you need to adapt this to a 904 or 727 to put it in like a Hornet which had a 304 in it. So if you look closely at this crank flange, the, the uh, flex plate looks like it just bolts right on there and everything would fit up and that you could put that flex plate on any way that you want. But if you rotate that flex plate one position, I don't know if you can see that very well, but like the bottom left and bottom right holes don't line up. So those holes are not drilled on an even spacing pattern. And that is because this particular flex plate has a weight right there, which is for balancing. So this flex plate can only bolt to the crank in one orientation. And that is what's gonna maintain the balance on this engine. So I think there's that little, is that like a reinforcement ring or something that also has the same bolt pattern. So you have to make sure that that matches up and you may have to kind of rotate that thing around until it makes sense. And as soon as we get that, we'll grab the bolts, clean them up and put some Loctite on them and get this thing slammed home. We did two steps so far. First was 25, the second I think we went to 70. So the final torque spec is like 105 foot pounds. So we're just gonna run through these real quick and bring them up to final torque on the flywheel or a flex plate, whatever. If not, we're throwing the balance off a couple micrograms. Does it make up for the big globs of weld on there? Right, I was gonna say, yeah, we could just, uh, I don't know, put a piece of glue or a little dab of glue over there and fix it. Just kidding. All right, so, oh, yeah, fries are done. Right. Sorry, Lucky Costa. We're gonna grab the torque converter, we'll get that filled up, and then grab the trans and slam it on here. All right, kids, we're gonna bolt up this torque converter and call it a night, because it's getting late and it's a school night. So some of us around here have jobs. That's not a slight at anyone watching. I understand everybody probably works. Calm down. But you guys have seen this before, right? One guy in the front, the other guy, which is probably me. I have shittier pants on. I'll go, I don't care. <laughs> so torque converter's already installed in here. Here's our access, the lower inspection cover's off. We left it off for this purpose. We could do this in the car. We're not going to, it's a lot easier right now. So we're gonna have, the first one will be easy because I can move the torque converter independent of the, of the uh, flex plate. Okay, so I got that one started. Right, so you can probably see in here, Flex plate, torque converter's behind there. 
I pop this one out just so you guys can see. You can see that the whole threaded hole is lined up and I'm moving the torque converter back and forth. So line that up and this is a 904 so we're using the inner bolt pattern of this flex plate. There are two bolt patterns because this flex plate will work with a 904 or a 727. We have a 904. All right, go ahead and rotate the engine. Do you want to tighten that down? No, I'm going to start them all by hand first. Okay. Okay. Okay, here we are. Engine married to transmission. Finally. This thing has been apart for what? Four months? Too long. Yeah, too long. So uh, we had a little bit of a snafu with the torque converter. I don't know if I'll be able to get you guys in there to see it. Yeah, sorry for the crazy angle, but AMCs are really good about only engineering things to go together one way, and that's it. So we had the torque converter misaligned with the flex plate uh, because the flex plate has a big locating hole which I shoved the pry bar through uh, to, uh, to allow Steve to torque down the uh, flex plate bolts. So if the torque converter, which has like a little fill plug or an inspection plug in it or something, if that plug is not aligned with that hole, you will not be able to actually align all the bolts for the torque converter itself. So slid the transmission back, spun the torque converter until it lined up, brought it back in, tightened all the bell housing bolts, and ran all the torque converter bolts in there and torqued those down. Um, I don't know if you can see, but out of that, out of this cooler line here, I don't know if you can see that how well, but if you look right in here, this thing is actually pumping fluid. So that's a good sign. That means that the torque converter is fully seated into the front pump of the transmission, so just the little bit of cranking we did uh, from the front just to rotate it to actually bolt the torque converter up, we were already pumping fluid. So that's encouraging uh, for first start on this thing. Uh, the next time you guys will see us, hopefully, we'll be slinging this thing into the long dead hornet over there. Uh, that's all for today. So. Finally gonna swing this thing back into the Hornet today. I don't think there's anything else preventing us from actually getting this in that car. So without further ado, let's get to that. Yeah, fender covers would be a good idea. This car actually has paint on it. So, don't we have two sets of those? Yeah, I don't know where the other one is right now. No, to me it fell back behind this toolbox. Oh. Yep. I don't for some reason I thought there was two sets here. Oh. And I was like, man, I don't know what I did with that other set. <laughs> no, it's at my own. Hopefully it's getting that thing to stay on that. Stay? I know they don't. Back it up a little bit. Here's where it gets a little tough. You gotta get the oil pan over the hump. Yep. So how much further forward can I come? Um, a couple inches.
Okay, so finally, finally, the 360 is back where it belongs. Couple of notes. If you're gonna do this swap, well, it is pretty straightforward. The engine blocks are the same size and dimension. But what I learned, being a previous Chevy guy, AMC engine mounts and frame stands are not exactly the same. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, so cast your mind back to when we took this engine out, however many months back that was. And you're probably thinking, well, why didn't you just look at the video to determine how to take it out? Well, definitely didn't do that. So, the way that these engine mounts work for an AMC, at least from my experience, you cannot just loosen this bolt here and that bolt there and lift the engine straight out. Because these studs that are in the engine mount are actually at an angle, like this. They are not straight up and down. So you, it's very difficult, and maybe it's possible, but it wasn't working for us. It's very difficult to drop the engine straight down onto the frame stands. What we found worked was a lot easier was to actually remove the engine mount bracket from the block right here. There's two bolts here and there's one back behind the motor mount. If you drop the motor mount through the, the frame stand, loosely put the nuts on here, okay, then, lower the engine down until you can get these bolts started into the block it makes the install way easier these amc engines at least in the hornet chassis are slammed in here this thing is really far down and really far back i think amc was trying to get the center of gravity down as far as possible on this car so there's literally zero clearance or very little there's probably an eighth of an inch between the the back of the valve cover and the firewall so you don't have a lot of wiggle room when you're going to put this in. Anyway, same thing on the other side. You have to start, you have to put the mount through the frame stand first, then get the block lined up so that you can bolt those engine mount brackets to the block. But there you have it. That's an AM3C, AMC 360. Wow, man, I need to learn my ABCs. That's a 360 in place of the 304 that was in here before. Looking really, really nice. Steve did a really good job refinishing most of the parts on this engine. Fits in there just like factory. Obviously, it's the same size, but she looks really, really clean. We just set the carb on there for today. The headers are hanging on the spark plugs because we're not ready to put those gaskets in yet. Obviously, we still need to button up all the front accessories and stuff. But there you go. Outros, outros. Ugh. Hate outros. Anyway, I think we made pretty good progress on the Hornet this time. Putting all the clips together for this took months. We don't get to work on this car as often as I would like to. Maybe once a week, maybe every other week. So thanks a lot for watching. On the next episode, we're going to get it started, run the cam in, maybe even take it for a first drive. So like, comment, subscribe, share, all that stuff, uh, or don't. I don't get paid for this. Thanks a lot for watching. Think about a time I almost lost you. I know, I know I was lost too. Had dreams and I lost a few.